Self-confidence is key. I've heard this way too many times. Self-confidence can be so difficult to have in our world today with everything that influences us. Many people feel ashamed of who they are because they do not fit the ideal person the world has created today. And this even includes myself. Hello, my name is Emily Truce, and today I'm gonna to be sharing my story with self-confidence. Growing up, I was not your stereotypical girl. I was very different from many of the girls in my class. I was the only one who wore so-called boy clothing and played many sports. This made it hard to fit in, but I never doubted myself for who I was. I always wanted to finish first in races, didn't care what my hair looked like, and wore clothes that never matched. This made me who I was, and I was proud. In grade five, I started to get acne. I was very confused because I was the only person in my class who had it. Although this was new, it never changed what I thought of myself, and I never felt insecure. Now you might ask, when did this all change? As you grow up, you get a different perspective of the world and learn it can be a harsh place where people can instantly judge you based on what you look like and what you wear. When I realized this, I began to question and doubt myself. I still remember my first day of elementary school, walking into a classroom and seeing an enormous sign on the wall. This sign had the phrase, treat people how you wish to be treated, written in a huge font that could never be missed. We learned this rule from day one, and I have always tried to stick with it. I came to Appleby College in grade eight. I will admit, I was sheltered from the real world. I had no social media platforms, which led me to not know the stereotypes and beauty standards seen all over social media. I had complete confidence in myself, and I never thought it could dwindle away. Social media started to become unavoidable as the greater population of my friends were all on it. I started to feel like an outcast and impulsively got the decision to meet Snapchat. I started finding the majority of my days watching popular stories and snapping people. A switch had flicked in my brain, accepting societal beauty standards and stereotypes. I wanted to change. I started wearing foundation and used beauty filters to cover my skin in pictures. I was never fully ashamed though, as I still had confidence in myself. Then one unexpected day, everything changed. I had found out someone had called me pimple face. Two words that completely shattered any remaining self-confidence that I had. I strongly questioned my perspective on the rule I had learned in elementary school. Why did I actively stick to it? while well, others could so quickly disregard it. I hated waking up in the morning and looking at myself in the mirror. I felt as if I started every day badly. Often, I'd find myself crying and calling myself harsh words that I deeply felt were true. Ugly, unwanted, disgusting. I was so exhausted at this point. I was never self-confident until my skin finally started to clear in grade 11. Unfortunately, I had the wrong idea. I thought I could only have self-confidence if I were considered pretty. At the start of grade 12, I was the most self-confident I'd been at my years at Appleby, but I still never learned that lesson, that fitting into societal norms should not be the only source of my self-confidence. Things started to quickly change as my anxiety unexpectedly started to peak. I'd often find myself scared, worried, and unhappy every day, but I tried my hardest to never let it show. As my anxiety and stress increased, my skin started to break out under my mask. Around December, I had hit rock bottom. 
I have felt completely drained of all my energy, happiness, and self-confidence. I scheduled 20 minutes into my morning routine to look in the mirror and completely strip myself of all the confidence that I had left. I would frustrate myself because I hated the reflection looking back at me. Next, I would cover my cheeks in, con in concealer, knowing I'd have to take off my mask at lunch, exposing my skin to my peers. I would then leave my dorm room and go to class as if nothing ever happened. I went into winter break angry, angry at myself. How could I let my skin get so bad? My parents started to notice the anger, fear, and frustration I felt as my skin increasingly got worse. They knew I was angry. I did not fit into these societal norms. Late December, I started an acne cream. This cream gave me a so-called purging outbreak. This started to set me back as I was not seeing any improvements. Two weeks in, something had changed. I started to focus on myself. One thing that made the most positive impact on my life, I got off social media, started to have a positive outlook on myself, and I reached out for help to cope with the stress and anxiety that I deal with. I also needed to realize I needed to focus on self-acceptance rather than self-confidence. I will not lie. These were the hardest steps, the initial steps. They can sometimes seem too large and out of reach, but it all came down to the difference of perseverance or giving up. Some days can be harder than others. Waking up, looking in the mirror, and viewing myself in a positive manner, or just taking off my mask at lunch and purely talking to my friends. These seem like hard tasks that could not be completed, accepting myself for who I was. The worst part is, I faked a smile the whole way through. I started to lose a piece of myself. In these initial steps, I realized self-acceptance is a two-way street. You need to treat yourself and others with respect. It goes both ways. When you disrespect someone else, you are reflecting the negativity that you feel within. A great example of this can be seen in team sports. The minute you start blaming your teammates for their mistakes, you are reflecting on a bad game on your behalf and the mistakes that you are making. Changing this to kindness will reflect the positivity that you feel within. When uplifting your team in a positive manner, you start to play a better game, knowing that you are not alone. The more positive that your mind is, you will play better. This ultimately changes how you view yourself. If you are able to say those kind words to others, you should be able to do the same while looking in a mirror. Another initial step was surrounding yourself with people who like me for who I am. This thought clicked after something someone said to me. I was going to meet up with my friend and I woke up late and did not have time to do my makeup. She called me saying she was at my home. I told her I wasn't ready. How do I open the door to her with my uncovered face? She told me, Emily, you are beautiful inside and out, and I would never judge you for something you cannot control. See, by choosing to surround yourself with positive people, you become a better version of yourself as you do not need to feel negative or worried while around them. You accept and love yourself for who you are. Although I am still learning, and I still have my bad days, I implore you to persevere through those initial steps. For the hardest step always will lead to a phenomenal victory. It might seem like the scariest thing in the world, but reach out, surround yourself with positivity. 
Be true to who you are. I promise that you will learn to love and accept yourself as you develop into the best version of yourself that you can be. Now please stand and virtually sing, Let Us Build a House. Thank you.